Carter Cash here. Today, Edith May and I are in downtown Holland, Michigan to check out the 94th annual Tulip Time Festival. The first Tulip Festival started in 1929 with a bloom of around 100,000 tulips. Today's festival will showcase about 4.5 million blooms and host some 600,000 visitors. We are currently walking up a Street through the downtown shopping district, which, by the way, is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, towards our first destination, Windmill Island. While we walk and Edith May shops, I'll give you a quick little history of Holland, Michigan. The city has a population of just over 35,000 people, of which 28% identify as being of Dutch heritage. This area was originally home to the Ottawa tribe of Native Americans, who by 1846 had been converted to Catholicism by local Catholic priests, and by most accounts they lived here peacefully with the Catholics. However, in 1847, Dutch Calvinists arrived, and by most accounts everything went to hell. The Dutch took an almost instant dislike to the Catholic tribe members, stole their lands, and forced them to move north off of their homelands. Not exactly the type of history you want to base a festival on. Not surprisingly, that last little comment was conveniently left out of the Tulip Time Festival's history of Holland. Oh well, history is written by the winners, not the losers. However, today, Holland is a very nice, bustling little town. Downtown has over 150 different shops to look at and over 40 different eateries to try out. Dutch attractions in this area include the Dutch Village, Windmill Island, Veldheer Tulip Farm, the Holland Museum, and Settlers Home, in addition to the Holland Beach State Park and at least four other beach access parks any store you want to go in, you just pick it. All right. Dog friendly. Not for my dog. No, not for our dogs. For normal people's dogs, it would be dog friendly. Now while Edith May is busy shopping for our not at all spoiled dogs at home, I'll pass on some other things that go on during this week-long festival. Uh, they have an artesian market where I guess artists have exhibits and crafts, quilt show, firework shows, band concerts, walking tours of downtown and walking tours of the uh, bloom areas, uh, tall ship tour, Dutch dancing classes and shows, they have classes on cut flower arrangement, art exhibits, they have a midway carnival, on stage entertainment at night, craft beer tasting, a street parade, and there are nine locations to view these tulips ranging in 4,000 uh, blooms up to 4 million blooms. All of that is available over the nine day period that the festival runs. Now it should go without saying this can get very congested down here uh, if you're down here on a weekend. We happen to be here on a Tuesday and Wednesday, and as you can see by the crowds, it was very nice. The temperatures were in the 70s, sun was out, it was beautiful. But the traffic can be bad, particularly on US Highway 31, the main route along and into uh, downtown Holland. So be advised of that. Now there are over 30 hotels and motels available to rent. There are five campgrounds in the area, also numerous B&Bs, Airbnbs, homes and cottages that are available to rent. Now we chose to stay at a Holiday Inn Express located just about a block off US Highway 31 and that turned out to be an excellent place to stay. We were able to take the back roads around downtown and getting in and out was absolutely no problem at all. This is the official Dutch village. I hate to call it an amusement park. It's a tourist attraction. It has a lot of kiddie rides. We decided 
we were going to pass on that, but Edith May wanted to go to the Dutch Village store. So, matter of fact, I bought some of these when we were uh, when we were in Amsterdam. I have them home on my collection of stuff. Well, I could have saved a buttload of money if I'd just come here and bought them instead of taking a cruise from Switzerland down to Amsterdam. Now, one little fun fact at the end of this episode, this street here, A Street, buried beneath it just a few feet is the discharge line for the hot water from the city power plant. Uh, this was built like this in the 30s. It runs underneath there before it discharges back into Lake Michigan and effectively melts the snow off this road all during the winter. Pretty neat idea. Can't say I've ever heard of that before. Okay, next stop, Windmill Island. See you next week.